Hello friends, Sentinel H here, and welcome back to our Chromatic Craft tutorial series. So the first thing I want to do is, in the previous episode of this series, I, I put out some misinformation. I have no idea what I was talking about. The Excavation Star absolutely does not have Silk Touch built into it. And uh, while I tried to figure out how the different modes work, I was a little bit wrong about how some of them worked. Reika corrected in the comments, so check that comment section on that video for the information. Basically, with volumetric mode on the Excavation Star, uh, it still can't uh, change non-connected sections of blocks, even if they fall within its uh, area of effect. And when, when you held shift, it just... Uh, it made the algorithm a bit more aggressive. It didn't actually make it ignore uh, block connections or anything. All right. As well, uh, you don't you need Ruskia for uh, the excavation star, or was it the transition star? One of them. And I said Katrina, I think. It's Ruskia, the brown one. All right, like russet potatoes. Okay. So in this uh, episode, we're going to talk about four more of these of these stars. We're going to try and go at a pretty uh, good pace so we can get through the four these four, and uh, they're pretty cool. They each do something useful, and um, although one of them I think is even more useful than the other ones, and we'll go over that one last because it's the coolest and most fun. Um, so we'll we'll start and we'll go through um, four of these stars. Okay, so the first star we're going to talk about is the uh, growth star over here on the right. The growth star. Um, it basically, it's magical bone meal. It allows you to make crops grow quicker, and uh, it's quite effective as far as that goes. Uh, in order to craft it, you're going to need uh, two aura dust, four bone meal, four chroma alloy ingots, one diamond, two kajani crystal shards, that's the dark green ones, four nature fiber, four sticks, and two water buckets. Now, if you're wondering where you get nature fiber from, you get them from aura ivy. Okay? So, it is, this is really common in places like Luminous Cliffs. Uh, it, it grows on the walls and stuff. You can break it and you can get the nature fiber. Or the nature fiber will just fall from the sky in those, uh, in those biomes. It's kind of neat. Anyway, if you can get the Aura Ivy, you can throw it in a grinder and you can get more. Or you can just break it and you can get nature fiber. Alright, so let's go ahead and craft this. The recipe, you put the diamond in your crafting, uh, in your casting table. So we'll put the diamond in there. And then... There's no runes required. You need uh, four chroma alloy ingots and four sticks, which is the same for uh, basically for every single one of these stars. You need chroma alloy ingots and you need sticks. Those are like the basic materials that they all utilize. And then we take our aura dust top and bottom and our water buckets left and right. So aura dust. So we'll put a water bucket over there. The ore dust goes down here, and another water bucket, and an ore dust, and then <clears throat> our, uh, our nature fibers, and our Kajani crystal shards. So as well as our, so the Kajani shards go one in the top left, right next to that ore dust, and the bottom right next to that. Oops, I broke it. Darn it. <sighs> Oop. It's still a thing, right? Yeah. I had a creeper come and blow up some of my uh, casting uh, room before that, uh, earlier. That was really annoying. While I was AFK, he blew it up. Uh, nature fibers uh, uh, next to these sticks. So uh, top right, top left, bottom left, uh, and on the right. Kind of follows a bit of a pattern. So we'll do that and that. Uh, that and that and I think that's right yes it is and then bone meals in the corner bone meal bone meal you will not fill every spot bone meal now we can do it we can cast it now there it goes awesome music sounds awesome colors love it so here's a growth star now, in order to use this, you need power, of course, like all the stars, you need to have energy stored in you. The energy that you need for the growth star to work is 2 Kiro, 40 Kajani, so you need a lot of the green one, which makes a lot of sense, and 10 Zambara, which is the purple. So you need the um, black, dark green, and purple. Okay? 
Yeah, because you can only check. There's Kuro, and there's a Zambaru, and of course Kajani is the one that we have over here. So this would be a, a great uh, a great way to grab some. Meow. We'll grab some Kajani. Not that it matters. I'm in creative mode, so it'll work anyway. But that, those are the powers that you need. So make sure you have some, otherwise it won't work. Uh, and then we can go over here to this uh, area where the uh, villagers have planted their crops. We'll whack them. I thought I had I had some seeds. I don't know where they went. Grab some more. And we'll just plant these. Do do. Now, if we whack it with the growth star, boop. It I think it always affects the one that you click directly on, but then it also affects others nearby. Now. I don't know if the distance that those particles are is the distance of the maximum effect or if the particle is just sort of spread out to that distance uh, anyway, but uh, it is affecting, you know, several of these with each click. It's quite cool, quite nice. If you had a large farm I could, and you really wanted to speed up the growth and get a couple of key crops because you needed their drops, uh, this would be a great way to do it. So it's very effective. I like it. Uh, it's a lot more effective than like those old. We used to have those watering cans, and and Reika mentioned it in the in the lexicon. We would have the the watering can that we would use um, in some other mods. Uh, previously, mod packs used the watering can, but uh, this is a a bit of a cooler, magical version. And that watering can didn't make much sense anyway. Basically, had like infinite water and acted like a. It's a cool little brown particles. That's neat. Like an infinite bone meal. Okay. So that's cool. That's the growth star. <clears throat> Next, we'll talk about uh, the capture star. The capture star is simple. It allows you to move mobs. Um, but it's still quite useful. So we need binding crystals. That's what I forgot to grab. So we'll grab ourselves some binding crystals. Uh, makes sense that it would use binding crystals. And there they are. We've crafted these before. We need a refresh. Uh, oh no, these aren't craftable. You you mine these. Okay, so this is an interesting recipe. You put string in the middle, uh, <laughs> so it needs a piece of string, and then we put our chroma alloy, just like all the other stars, and then we chuck down our sticks, and then we just need binding crystals on the sides, and no runes needed. Binding crystal, binding crystal, binding crystal, and another binding crystal. And that will allow us to craft the capture star. Boom. There it goes. I love listening to these things. Crafting things in Chromatic Craft is a, a joy. Okay, so, capture star. You need power, just like the other stars. The power that you need... Oh, come on. I went way past it. Here they are. For the capture star is Argia, 50 of it, 10 Ruzova, and 20 Asvesti. Okay? So if you remember, Argia, let me remember which one it is. I always forget some of these. That's Argia, this one. Okay? Ruzova is the pink one. And then the other one was, um, darn it, I can't remember. I have a bad memory for stuff like that. Asvesti. That's the lime green one. That's this one. Okay. So get yourself some of those energy colors and then go find a mob. Uh, here's some pigs. So, of course, you could lead the pigs around with food or with, a, you know, whatever, but <coughs> as Reiki mentions in the uh, entry for this item, it's very unreliable. However, with this, boop, I can pick them up. Now the cool thing about this is that you can just have him in your inventory. So he's stored inside the star, so I can just run around, do whatever I want. You can see it's kind of shimmering there to let you know there's a mob in there. You can only have one mob in each star at a time, so if you want to carry multiple mobs at once, you're going to need multiple stars, because there is a mob in there. It contains a pig with a health of five hearts, and I can, boom, plop him down where I want him. Sweet! Now I had moved a pig earlier, and he wandered way over here. But if you see, I can't, like, pick up two pigs. In fact, the other pig 
What do you die? These pork chops. These pork chops. <laughs> okay, so I don't know if it's meant to do that. If you try and pick up another mob, it kills it. Or if it just sort of did a thing, but that's kind of funny because though we ended up with, with one pig and two pork chops <laughs> when we tried to pick up a second pig. So don't do that. You can just pick up one mob at a time. Quite useful, especially if you're wanting to relocate hostile mobs uh, because while they're in this star, they won't be harming you. So good if you want to locate move mobs for a farm of some description. I don't know. That's what that does. Uh, quite cool, the capture star, I think. It's got definitely got its uses, obviously, if you want to go find your cows or some pigs or some, and some sheep. To get your farm started, it's a very easy way of relocating the mobs. But I think for hostile mobs, it's even more useful. If there are hostile mobs you want to move around. Like, uh, I don't know, slimes? I can't, I I'm trying to think of reasons you'd want to relocate hostile mobs. I mean, obviously, if you just wanted to have them around, but I'm trying to think of re of of items they produce without dying. You can't breed them. Like, can you imagine breeding zombies? Yeah, don't even want to think about it. Okay, so that's that. Next we'll go to the construction star. This is, uh, well, you might imagine what this is. This is very similar to the um, builder's wand. In fact, it's essentially the same thing from the mod. We, uh, we do the standard thing with the uh, chroma uh, I mean the chromic uh, alloy ingots in the sticks. We put a transformation core in the center. We use infused dust uh, and put that on the sides. Now infused dust, if you remember, it comes from essence lilies. And there's an essence lily right over there on the water. You can see it. You saw it when we went and got those pigs. That's what it looks like. That's an essence lily. So you just need to grab some of them and, uh, and get yourself some of this infused dust. Now we can do this. Very, uh, this is going to be a really useful item uh, for building, obviously. Uh, definitely something that I would want on my um, building my factory in the Rev 3 series if I didn't already have the Builder's Wand. Although this probably maybe even has some features that, uh, I don't know if this has any extra features that I would want other than that, but it's really cool. So, just like a normal buildery thing, you can um, boop and you can click and it'll copy the ones in a row. It'll keep going like that, and you can keep making it bigger, and uh, easily place a whole bunch of stuff. I don't think anything happens uh, by holding shift, but uh, it's very it's very useful for that. So if I wasn't in creative mode, I would of course need to have these blocks in my inventory in order for it to place them, um, just like the builder's one. But since I am in creative mode right now, it doesn't require that. But it will take and um, extend whatever block you click on um, basically a, with adjacency to it so um, there's nothing seems to ha happen when I uh, hold shift actually something does happen when I hold shift so right now there's one over there's some over there if I hold shift it seems to lock it okay so it, it does it in an AOE like in an area but if you hold shift it seems to only do it in the connected area Whereas if I do it like right, like right here, you can see that it wants to do the area over there too. If I hold shift, it, it restricts itself. At least that seems to be what's going on. See? That's cool. So you can use this star to, um, to easily place blocks, to easily uh, extend walls, build them up higher or build them longer. Just be very careful with it, because just like the Builder's Wand, you could very easily place a whole bunch of blocks where you didn't want to and have to remove them. In order to use this, uh, you do need, of course, oh, what is that? You do need uh, the proper amounts of energy. The Construction Star requires 5 Kuro, which is the black, 10 Riskia, which is the brown, and 10 Tahara. And Tahara is, I believe, yes, the white energy. Okay. That's what you're going to need in order to do that. Of course, you can get that through the, uh, you can get that through the lumen incineration process, or you can, you can uh, grab it from pylons or other chargey things that you can build at your base that we haven't touched on yet. Um, so there's ways to get this power and uh, so that you can use it for this stuff. And it goes in your little wheel in the upper left. Okay. Now the one that I think is the most fun out of these, it's the Mobility Star. 
and you can already guess what this does. So we're going to go ahead and and, uh, and build it real quick, and I think it's going to be a lot. I think it's a lot of fun, but also extremely useful. And that's with all of these stars. They're fun and useful, which is the best kind of a thing. And you do need an energy core in order to build it. Four aura dust, four chroma alloy ingots, four chroma dust, three diamonds, three ender pearls, and energy. The energy core and four sticks. So it is the most expensive out of all of these as far as the, the base. Oh, this is a different recipe actually. The uh, chromic dust goes here and the sticks go on the outside. So I've already screwed it up because I was too hasty. So this has a different layout than the other stars did. So let's get things uh, right here. So chromic dust, north, south, east, and west. And then the alloy goes in the corners. The sticks are going to go in the far corners. Stick, 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 stick. And then we have diamond on the top and also on the bottom left and bottom right. On the north, diamond there, diamond there. And we have the aura dust. Which goes here, 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 and here. And then the ender pearls, which go on the bottom, on the south, and then it goes in the upper left and upper right. Ender pearl, ender pearl, ender pearl. And then the one on the left and right are empty. So we can cast this now. Boop. Bask in the wonderful tones and glow of the mod. And then grab ourselves the mobility star. Now, here's what this does. It, it allows you to teleport around. Boop. It's got a really long range. See, it teleported way over here. It's got a limited range, though. You can't go way... I can't go way over there. But with just a couple of clicks, I can easily clear an extremely large distance and reach difficult to access areas. Boop. You can see it. You can teleport to it. Boop. Very cool. I like this a lot. I would love to have one of these, of these while I'm building stuff because then if I fall off the roof, I can just mobility star my way back up. Now it is expensive to use. Like the other ones, you do need energy for it. So you can't just keep mobility starring your way all over the place. Because it does take 100 Kiro, 50 Zimbaro, and 250 Asvesti, so it's not cheap on the energy. It uses more energy per cast than any of the other stars that we've talked about so far. Alright, so the Asvesti is the green, the lime green, Kiro of course, the black, Zimbaru, purple. So you're going to need a lot of the lime green ones, so... This is especially uh, Asvesti hungry. I mean, it's like the energy of mobility, I believe, is the Asvesti. So, yeah, definitely not cheap to cast, but definitely really useful and extremely fun to just boop, zip myself around. I love it. Really long range, too, like I mentioned. You can go to some far off locations uh, with this thing. Be careful teleporting into chunks that. Teleporting to the edge, you're gonna have to wait a while for the chunks to load. <laughs> but uh, oh, there's a there's a rusky pylon down there. But um, it's very cool. It's very useful. I could definitely see myself using it. Nice. It's not quite the same as like flight as other mods can give you, but this is, you know, instantaneous transportation to wherever you can see. Quite cool. You can just live out your fantasy of being an Enderman without having to throw pearls around. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. That's it for this one. These stars are all extremely useful. Mobility star, construction star, capture star, and growth star. They all do their own little thing. And, uh, and I hope you uh, found one, or maybe multiple, that you're now interested in. And uh, something to go for and something to uh, aspire to acquire when you start Chromatic Craft. That's a little earlier on than the late game stuff that everybody wants. Because Chromatic Craft, of course, it's a mod that you're not supposed to rush through. It's a mod you're supposed to 
engage with and enjoy while you're, uh, you know, acquiring more knowledge and progressing through it. So uh, it's about the journey, not the destination. But I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. Thank you so much for watching. Like and comment the video down below if you did enjoy it. Join the Discord if you're interested in chatting with us. I'm Sentinel H, and I'm signing out.